Hey, hello, Corinne. Second Zoe here, and I'm going to be doing another tutorial. This one is looking at tones and highlights. Currently, I've drawn this nice little, I guess you could say it's a green pepper, but I haven't colored the color, haven't done the colors yet. But I'm just going to fill those in, and so we can get started. So I'm just going to add some colors. You know how green peppers are, kind of dark green. And I guess the one's good enough, as well as one for this top there, a little darker. Okay, that's not working. Alright, this one works. So I'm gonna color those in. One for here and one for there. Make this a little darker. And now we have the color of our green pepper. Now, this is just for a simple object, tones and highlights, but you can also do it for complete animation, such as a completely rigged character, if you want to add tones and highlights to a character like that, then you could do something like that. But I'm just going to go with simple for now. And potentially, possibly the next video, we'll look at something a little more complex. So, first things first, I'm going to go to my network view. And I'm also going to draw from my module library. So, let's just rename this drawing. Pepper. Or green. No, we we'll just leave that pepper. Okay, and so module library, we'll be going to our filters, and we're going to look for our highlight. So we're going to do highlight first, and then we're going to do tone, and then we're going to look at adding them both at the same time. So highlight, we're going to run the alphabet, highlight is found here. So you'll notice that highlight has two inputs. And one output. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have to create another drawing for now. Just to be simple, we're gonna create another drawing for it. What I want to do is add a highlight to my pepper, just so you can see how it works. So we're gonna add a new drawing layer. Now let's call this. I like okay so now we have a highlight drawing and we have a pepper drawing and pretty much the highlight module here takes two inputs it takes two drawings what it's going to do is going to take one drawing what you want the highlight to be on and the next one here is what the highlight will be you can also find how to use these things in your help file. You go to help and you have your help file. It actually gives you a nice comprehensive look at using the software as well as the effects. So if you were someone who is like a beginner or a noob or someone who just wants to learn some new stuff, you can actually press the F1 key and it will give you some more stuff. So let's just go on with our highlight. We're going to have everything go straight through the highlight module filter and highlight itself is going to go directly into the composite. So I'm going to detach pepper here so pepper disappears and also have highlight. I want to stick highlight back into the composite and so our pepper reappears. Now this highlight here that you see, the color itself doesn't matter because it's just going to be used as pretty much a shape so it, so it could be black or white already it really doesn't matter so just for this highlight I guess I'll use the color of white so white here and I have my highlight layer although sometimes I prefer working with the network view so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to draw some highlights on my pepper 
let's say for example on the right layer highlight I'm just gonna draw some highlights let's say for example my light source is going to be and it really doesn't matter how you do stuff like this let's just say it's coming from the top so I'm just gonna write that so light source right so then my highlight is gonna be like this I'm gonna draw some shapes somewhere. I'm gonna fill these in after this as well. No worries. And now it's gonna fill the end. So you can actually see the highlight acting as a mask. Or for those of you who don't know what a mask is, it only works within my pepper drawing. So even though I could click on my highlight and show the strokes, you can see some of the stuff actually coming on the outside here. It only shows within the pepper. So if we go to our render view, it should look something like this. Now it might look a bit unrealistic, but we can also change some of the properties of our highlight module. So we're just going to do that. So we're going to go inside our layer properties, and you're going to see some stuff like chuck factor, blur, tight, the radius. So you could choose radial or directional. I usually stick with radial. Sometimes you might want to use directional, especially if you have something, say for example, a source that can move because if you actually go to your data view for your modules, you can actually edit, say for example, that radius or your angle or all these things. Now I want us to keep a nice look at here. Now one cool thing that you can do, you can always change the radius. So by default, the radius is Two. If you took it to zero, it will show you the exact mat for the drawing for your highlight. Increase it a little bit. Let's say we go up to 10. It looks a little nicer. Kind of like a blurred shading. And instead of working with just that material, you actually have some other stuff so you could actually invert the mat, which means all that we see here with the highlights will actually be inverted. So now it will look something more like this. Of course that looks kind of weird. So and you can also use the matte color. So if you wanted to use a straight white, you could. So when I said that you it doesn't really matter the color, you can always change the option to for it to matter. So if we were to come here in our colors and change this white to I don't know yellow. And of course, it would change to that too. Let's go back to white. And one of my favorite ones is the multiplicative property. What it will actually do is multiply your mat with the actual color of your drawing, say my paper. I will multiply the highlight on it. So it will look more like a nice light green shade here for this paper here. As well as for the stock, it's a little lighter as you can see. And pretty much this is it for the highlight filter. It works the same way as the tone. So if we wanted to we just quickly show you how tone works. And tone has the same properties as highlight. So let's go back to our network view. 
can you delete this because of well I got rid of it so put that off there it disappears from my timeline and I'm just gonna drag tone in there and we're gonna replace highlight with tone so let's hold down the alt key slide that out of place holding down alt for the tone and sliding this in place and so we're actually gonna use a drawing substitution for for tone now as you can see so far it looks a little darker here because now we're using well a tone and this is our render view it actually just darkens it so if we go into the properties of the tone like i said before it actually has the same properties as your highlight is just how you use it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a different drawing substitution for this so we can use the tone a little better so click in this button here create new drawing and now it's kind of blank whoops that was the top we're on the highlight so click that there disappears and so we're going to draw something new i'll just use black this time just for the sake of understanding so let's say we did something like this and probably some stuff going on inside here because I don't seen that going on sometimes so just gonna do that and fill it in. So black there, black here, and render view shows it like this. Of course, I'm gonna use the multiplicative again, and we're gonna get a nicer effect. So let's go back to our network view. Go into our tone properties. Change up some of the radius and such. I could also show you what it looks like with directional, so maybe best I do that one too. So right now radial blurs everything overall, but for directional it blurs in a certain direction. So say for example our angle is zero, you'll see that it's blurring towards the left. If say for example we went to 90, it blurs downward. If you went to negative 90 then, oops. Or what's it 270? Blurs upward, and we can just change around and also increase our radius. Let's say 50, just so you can see it. You can see a, a bigger blur, right? So we just go back to say 20, and use that radial. We have something like this, and then we're just gonna let me show you invert map those again. It inverted, so it kind of looks like a glow going on in a sense in a dark area. Kind of like, I don't know, if say for example you had a jack-o'-lantern or something, something like that. Use matte color, black, well, can't exactly use black seeing as black is black. So let's use multiplicative, and you might see it a little bit there. And if you're having problems seeing it, you can also adjust your alpha, so currently it's at 100. You can also carry it up to... I don't know, hmm, let's say 200, so it'd be easier for you to see. So that's really what tones and highlights are about. So I'll just continue this in a part two, and we'll have how to use them both at the same time. Okay? Thanks for watching, and take care and God bless. Peace.